Fantastic. Thank you, Simon. Um, good morning, good afternoon to all your viewers. Um, hopefully this is a little bit more enjoyable than what we're currently seeing uh, in the cricket, but let's hope that rain can save us this time. Mm -hmm. So to jump into that, um, I'm Ross Beckley. I'm the Chief Investment Officer at High Street. On my right, I've got Charlie Denipasteur. He is the lead analyst on the new product, which we'll be talking about today, the 007. And then on my left, I've got Christopher Brownlee. He's a research analyst and head of research, but a research analyst on the AMC 002, which we have previously spoken about on the show. Uh, if we can jump onto the next slide there, Chris. Just to give you a bit of a background about High Street, um, High Street was uh, founded in 2011 uh, by Michael Patchett. Um, since then, we've grown to be a reputable business. Um, currently, we're managing 1.5 billion rand under management, and as of the end of the uh, end of the year, we'll have a track record across all of our funds. However, the topic of today's discussion is the AMCs. Um, those were launched more recently. Um, the AMC 002, approximately one year ago, whereas the AMC 007, which replicates our global equity fund, Wealth Warriors, that was launched uh, one month ago. And the, the performance has been good to date, but obviously very short in the. Sorry, we've just had some load shedding here. I just want to make sure that everything's still up and running. We can still see you. We're just seeing your, uh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Fantastic. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, it's uh, everyday life in South Africa. But anyway, uh, the topic uh, for today's discussion will be the AMCs, uh, which were recently launched. Um, a little bit, little bit more about High Street. We, uh, you may have heard, uh, um, heard of us on uh, various media, media channels. We are starting to get our name out there. We, we are available on a lot of the, the major platforms. And our key differentiator is that we try and be different. We try and offer something which, which fills a hole in the market and appeals to certain investors. Um, let's jump on to the next slide there, Chops. Um, very important is our partners, very topical at the moment is global and uh, global and local, what's happening there with the BHI Trust. Um, I'm not going to go into depth there, but just to assure our investors um, that we uh, all the structures are regulated by the FSCA um, and our partners are household names. So the partners for uh, today's discussion um, is Standard Bank. They are the issuers of the note. and. Uh, we do not have access to, to that money and uh, the cash that's ring fenced uh, on their balance sheet. But uh, I think we can jump into our offering. Um, we, we do have a local fund. Um, many of you may have heard of it. Um, it's arguably our most uh, differentiated product. That is a RAND offering, which offers a 95% plus exposure um, uh, for retirement savers. And then on the offshore side, we have our global balance fund, which is moderate risk in nature, targets US CPI plus three to five percent over running three to five year periods, as well as our Wealth Warriors Fund. Now, the Wealth Warriors Fund uh, offshore, uh, the asset, uh, the size of that fund is fifteen million dollars and has performed very nicely this year, albeit of a low base last year. That is the new um, structured product, which we'll be discussing today. Over and above that, we also have our yielding structured products. That's the AMC 002, which Chris will be speaking about today. Um, and, and the objective there is to invest in high yielding securities, where we define yield as both um, the dividends uh, returned to shareholders, as well as buybacks. But let's jump into the offering. Thanks, Ross. Um, so because AMCs are fairly new, they were only introduced to the JSC last year, July 2022. And uh, we thought it'd be quite useful for investors who aren't so familiar with them to uh, give an indication of, of what they are. So an AMC is a non-interest paying instrument that pays the investor the performance of a basket of securities. 
Uh, it might sound a little bit complex, but essentially these are similar to unit trusts where uh, investors receive certificates uh, of a portfolio of underlying instruments, and therefore they are suitable for both professional and retail investors. Uh, they're issued by banks, in our case, Standard Bank, uh, and then they're actively managed by a portfolio manager, that'll be High Street Asset Management, according to a specific investment mandate. Uh, very important here to note, as Ross mentioned, that the securities and the administration is all run by the bank, Therefore, the investor must be uh, must be uh, comfortable with the uh, the credit risk uh, that each bank uh, has. There are 43 MCs currently listed on the JSE, so they have been quite a popular instrument, uh, given the fact they were only launched a year ago. Uh, Standard Bank and UBS are the main issuers here in South Africa, but there are many others uh, overseas. And crucially, they trade like a share. Very easy, uh, cost-effective instruments to invest in and they give access to global companies and strategies in RAND. So to run you through quickly how to invest in AMCs, uh, they're very easy because they're listed on the JSC and they trade just like a share. As an investor, you would use either an existing, existing brokerage account or open a new one. You then contact your broker who instructs for the purchase of a certificate. The broker contacts the bank's trade desk and buys a certificate at NAV. Uh, with uh, standard brokering charges applied. Then the certificates are transferred to the investor's custody account um, and the investor then owns shares uh, or certificates in that particular AMC. It's important to note that the, the reverse is uh, the same for selling. So uh, as, as an uh, investor will just uh, do the reverse uh, to then get their cash uh, transferred back to the custody account. Uh, it's a very easy process, no onboarding forms, no administrative burdens like can be seen in other structures. So in our case, uh, with High Street and R2 AMCs, Standard Bank acts as the note issuer. Uh, that means they are the, the, the local issuer and carry credit risk for, for the investment. Uh, these notes are issued as part of Standard Bank's structured note program, an 80 billion rand program. Uh, AMCs are listed on the JSC with a total expense ratio of 1.1%. High Street is the investment advisor or uh, portfolio manager, and our job is to uh, stick to the particular mandates of, of each investment uh, and allocate uh, the investment accordingly. So within AMC002, which was launched uh, towards the back end of last year, it's a defensive strategy uh, with a value bias. It's diversified across sectors and geographies, and its focus is on capital return. So that is through dividends and share buybacks to give a total yield. AMC007, which uh, was just recently launched last month, it has a slightly more aggressive investment strategy with a growth bias. Uh, it targets innovative and disruptive companies, and its focus is capital growth, uh, which is essentially share price appreciation. So the question, uh, what the one would ask is why High Street? And uh, the answer is because High Street's mandate is to maximize offshore exposure. Uh, if you look at the charts to your left, which lists the uh, dollar rand exchange rate over the last 30 odd years, uh, you'll see that the rand has depreciated by 6% against the US dollar since 1995. Uh, the rand is essentially an emerging market currency. Uh, most of that devaluation can be explained by uh, the inflation differential between the two currencies. Uh, with sharp movements uh, either side being linked to economic and political events. Uh, it's our house view that uh, the inflation differential will continue to be the primary driver of this long-term trend, and economic and political shocks will drive uh, exacerbated moves away from the trend. Um, however, we are not uh, currency forecasters, and we do encourage investors to assign their own probabilities about, about the direction of the RAND, if you look to the chart to your right, um, which is the uh, S&P 500 index uh, in orange uh, versus the JSC also in blue and the performance of those two since 1995, you can see that the uh, S&P has outperformed the JSC significantly by, to the tune of about 4% per annum. Uh, this weakness uh, in the RAND has been a major factor in the outperformance. 
Um, however, the relative economic climate and the weakness we've seen in South Africa relative to the states uh, has been a also a big factor in these drivers. Uh, we as a house, High Street, believe that if the status quo remains in terms of the current uh, economic climate in South Africa, offshore markets are set to continue to outperform the local market. But it's not just the JSC uh, that has been trailing the US. And in fact, if we look at the uh, MSCI World Index, excluding the US, it has done very little uh, since the finan global financial crisis. So the chart on the left has the earnings per share growth of the index uh, and the index XUS based to 100. And you can see the US in green has managed to significantly outperform and grow earnings 137% relative to what's been quite flat growth globally. This ultimately is driven in the right-hand chart, extreme share price outperformance uh, to the tune of around 200% over that same period, uh, because ultimately earnings growth is primarily the ultimate driver of share price performance. If you look to the bottom of the table, um, we have High Street's internal um, valuation metrics, uh, and you can see even though some might call for a mean reversion, our internal models indicate there's still more outperformance to come uh, to the tune of around 3% per annum over the next five years. And as such, high street, uh, the US remains High Street's primary uh, investment region. So with that macro, macro outlook in mind, uh, I'm excited to be able to talk about our recently launched AMC. Uh, it replicates our US dollar-based World Warriors Fund, as Ross mentioned, uh, which was listed in Ireland in 2016 with the same mandate, uh, and we've seen solid performances uh, through that time, bar a, uh, a drawdown in 2022. Uh, the mandate is central to the AMC, as it is central to World Warriors uh, Fund, and uh, it drives all decision-making uh, within our team. So uh, it is a global equity product. Uh, this means that even those uh, RAND denominated, it is offshore focused, and it invests exclusively across developed and then select emerging markets. Um, all outside of the RAND. It's intended to provide long-term capital growth. And by long-term, we mean a five-year investment period. Uh, this is because the AMC has a slightly more risk aggressive risk, uh, sorry, a more aggressive risk profile. So we do advise clients to hold through the cycle to realize gains. And then finally, a top-down thematic approach is used to identify uh, investments. And this means that companies are identified based on their ability to advance technological innovation and change consumer behavior. So what does that mean? And, and what are the themes driving in disruption and innovation? And, and uh, how does that mean that AMC is currently invested? So uh, expo exposure is spread globally across eight distinct themes. Themes are identified using our proprietary uh, research in-house, as well as external uh, research, which we use to subsidize our decisions. Leading companies within themes are then identified based on strong underlying fundamentals. This is crucial to not just the AMC uh, 007, but all, all funds and products across High Street. Fundamentals remain the forefront of our investment process. And that's because there's a big difference between investing in an exciting theme and an investable one. Um, a company might have a, a fantastic story, but without solid metrics like top line growth, competitive moats, uh, balance sheet strength, et cetera, uh, it won't make cuts in terms of our rigorous process. Uh, the AMC does also aim to be fully invested at all times uh, within its pr prudential limits, aiming to limit cash drag uh, always. And if you look to the chart to your right, you can see the breakdown of how the AMC is currently invested. Unfortunately, we don't have time to delve into all eight themes today, um, but we will be able to take a look at our biggest theme, uh, semiconductors, which makes up 21% of the AMC, as a bit of a case study. So semiconductors are the engines of digital life, uh, and they power the technology that impacts almost every facet of our daily lives. Uh, they power our phones, our laptops, uh, even more basic household appliances like microwaves and fridges. Uh, even uh, sort of to higher tech uh, themes like uh, the cloud and AI. Um, if you look to the chart on your left, left, it gives you an indication of the growth that we uh, expect to see, or that the analysts expect to see in the global semiconductor market, rising from $590 billion uh, in 2021 to, to uh, over a trillion dollars 
in 2030. Uh, this is really driven by uh, a number of key themes, but mainly computing and data storage, uh, wireless communication, and automotive electronics, those bottom three blocks you see in the, uh, in the chart. Um, automotive electronics, for example, is expected to grow three times in that, uh, in that space of time, from 2021 to 2023. And that's because uh, of two factors. One is cars are getting more um, technical um, in terms of their roadside assistance, their entertainment systems, all those things require semiconductors. Uh, so your average car nowadays has around 1,500 semiconductors. Uh, but the drive towards uh, EV vehicles or electric vehicles uh, that is happening worldwide as the governments try and uh, become more eco-friendly. The uh, sort of phasing out of the internal combustion engine means that electric vehicles uh, are, are going to be more prominent going forwards, and these have over 3,500 uh, semiconductors per vehicle. Semiconductors are also uh, a technology of strategic importance. Governments were worldwide are now investing billions of dollars to secure their supply chains after COVID, and uh, we're still feeling the knock-on effects today of those of those issues and supply chain issues uh, with chips. The US government, for example, uh, have recently passed into law the CHIPS Act, which is a $280 billion spending package over the next 10 years. And then finally, AI technology, uh, even though it's still in its infancy, um, we've started to see this year a huge burst in interest and products. Um, from the likes of not only Microsoft, uh, Google, et cetera, but also uh, startups who are really going to change the way we work and live uh, in the future. And uh, that will likely drive exponential demand for semiconductors uh, in the coming years. In terms of how the AFC is exposed, uh, we have uh, an investment of 21%, uh, so a significant amount of the AFC, and that's invested across five companies which uh, specialize in four key areas of the semiconductor supply chain, that being manufacturing, fabulous design, data infrastructure, and automotive and industrial. However, beneath the hype, uh, most importantly, there needs to be strong company fundamentals to justify the investment case. And if you look at that table uh, to the bottom of the page, you can see that the high street weighted uh, fundamentals across all the key metrics we look at, return on invested capital, revenue growth, margins, et cetera, are significantly better than the general general uh, equity index, the MSCI world. And these will continue to be driven by AI and automation, cloud computing, EV and uh, autonomous driving, gaming virtual, uh, and virtual reality, amongst others. Uh, and we've seen some fantastic boosts in share prices for this theme, among others, uh, with NVIDIA just being a highlight. Uh, even though the share price is over two, up over 200% so far this year, they've still managed to grow their revenue 88%. They've grown their data revenue close to 170% and their earnings as well uh, almost four times. So the, the fundamentals really driving share price performance so far this year. And this focus on fundamentals is, as I mentioned, a key part of High Street's proprietary research, research process. Um, if you look at the table uh, below, it can be demonstrated by the operating metrics, again, of our wider core holdings. So not just within semiconductors, but across all our core holdings, uh, they are far superior to the wider market. And just as we've seen with NVIDIA, um, this has followed through to our other core holdings. Uh, the Magnificent 7 uh, in orange in the, in the charts at the top, you can see it significantly outperformed the wider market, uh, the S&P equal weighted market, which is uh, just an average of all stocks uh, you can see is actually down for the year. Um, and this is because despite a difficult economic environment, the uh, core holdings and actually most of the holdings within the AMC have significantly outperformed in terms of their fundamentals. Finally, uh, this is, again, we don't expect to mean revert. If you look to the shaded, um, shaded blue, shaded gray at the bottom of the table, you can see that High Street's internal IRR metrics as well as analyst, uh, sell side analyst uh, expectations are still showing strong upside uh, for these names, our core holdings, and also many others uh, within our AMC. So to conclude, um, AMC 007 High Street World Warriors is a very exciting uh, new product uh, listed on the JSC. It invests in innovative companies driving change and disruption. 
Uh, it has a focus on long-term capital growth, which is share price appreciation, but that share price appreciation must be backed up by solid company fundamentals. Uh, it gives an investor exposure to the world's leading companies in rand, and importantly, it is easy to buy and sell because it trades just like a share. Thanks, Charlie. So moving on to our second AMC, we have spoken to this one before. It was launched in the back end of December last year, but AMC 002, or as we know, the High Street Offshore Yielding Product. Uh, it's very different to the Wealth Warriors AMC with a far more defensive strategy and a value bias. This being said, we do still invest in companies with strong growth prospects, uh, as long as these companies have defensive characteristics and are trading at at, a fa at attractive valuations given their growth. Uh, this AMC is a yielding product, investing in companies that are returning large amounts of capital to shareholders, both in the form of dividends and buybacks. Um, as you can imagine, it's very important that we monitor the sustainability of these capital returns, and therefore to warrant investment, company must display strong fundamentals, such as robust balance sheets, durable competitive advantage, uh, and then also strong profitability. And then even more importantly, cash conversion is key, as these companies must be able to convert these paper profits into cash, which can then be returned to shareholders. Overall, the AMC targets a total yield, uh, obviously made up of dividends and buybacks of four plus percent. Um, but it is important here to note that this is not an income fund. Those dividends received are not paid out to the investors, but rather reinvested back into the portfolio. We do believe that this is a major positive for the AMC investors as the reinvestment of dividends um, has a magical compounding effect on returns over time. And given that it trades on the JSE, investors can easily rather sell units to meet their liquidity needs. Uh, given the reinvestment of dividends and the more defensive strategy um, this yielding portfolio implies, um, it is suitable for investors seeking capital gains over a medium to long term. So why do we choose to, to implement this high yielding strategy? Uh, we did a bit of a case study looking back at how such strategies have performed, dating back all the way to 2000. So over that 23-year period or so, the S&P has returned just under 350% or 6.5% uh, per year. So by all means, a, a very decent return. However, um, this falls well short of the Dividend Aristocrats Index return, which is basically just an index made up the, of the most consistent dividend payers within the S&P 500 and has returned over 550% or 8.2% per annum. Furthermore, the Buyback Index which is an index that tracks uh, 100 stocks within the S&P that are proportionally buying back the most stock. And this has shown even greater outperformance of the S&P, returning almost 10% per year since 2000. So as can be seen, yielding strategies, or in the US at least, where they're focused on buybacks or dividends, have historically, historically outperformed the market. Um, also, our product is quite unique in that it combines both these yielding strategies with buybacks and dividends combined to form a company's total yield, which is the metric we, we focus on. So very important for more defensive type products, obviously, is diversification. As can be seen on the left, the AMC has exposure across all the major sectors while being overweight our, highest, our higher conviction sectors. Healthcare is currently the biggest, but this exposure is partly diversified in itself with the inclusion of both health insurers on one side and then also the pharmaceutical majors on the other. Uh, the healthcare sector has long been touted for defensive quality and has produced outside returns over the years, particularly in the US. Um, many of you may be surprised to see the information technology sector there making up such a big part of the portfolio. But if you look at the, the major tech companies, they are some of the largest returners of capitals in the world, of capital in the world. And this is just because of their superior cash generative ability. On the right, uh, we have our holdings, and you'll see many of these are household names whose products and services are on grade in our everyday lives, um, such as the likes of a, a, a Apple, a, a Visa, a Microsoft, Nestle, et cetera. Um, also, just looking across those names, you'll see that there's a strong bias towards U.S. listing, 
and this thing is, and this is partially due to our preference, as Charlie spoke to, to earlier, to the US. Um, but it's also important to note that while, yes, many of these are US listings, many of these are large multinational companies with globally diverse revenue streams. For example, the likes of, uh, of Alphabet or Johnson & Johnson earn more than half of their revenue from outside of the US, which provides diversification from the US despite them being US companies. Um, so I think most people understand what dividends are and how they work, but share buybacks are slightly less known. Um, just to explain it briefly, basically, instead of paying cash to shareholders, companies use that cash to buy back their own shares. What this means is that there's, there's less shares outstanding. So as a result, investors who still hold the stock have a greater proportional ownership of the business. As a very simplified example, if a company has 100 shares outstanding and you own one share, so you own one out of 100, you then own 1% of the business. But if the company buys back 50 shares, say 50% 50 of the shares outstanding, and you still own your one share, you now own one out of 50 shares or 2% of the business. So your ownership has effectively doubled. Um, this is an extreme example, and even companies with large buyback programs tend to buy back around 5% of their shares outstanding a year, but you can imagine how this does compound over a longer period. Um, in terms of buybacks, Apple is the poster child, and since starting their buyback program in 2012, they've bought back more than $560 billion of stock. This is just a, a staggering amount and is actually larger than the eighth biggest company on the S&P today. So it is just a, an extreme amount of share, share repurchases and pays tens of testament to the cash generator ability of Apple. Um, importantly, the crux here is that as it resulted in shares decreasing um, or shares outstanding decreasing by 41%, uh, looking at the chart on the left hand side, you've got shares outstanding. On the right hand side, you've got the share price. And as you can see, since the onset of that program, the, the shares have come down, the shares outstanding have come down incrementally. And this has been a, a large driver of the share price growth seen by the blue line there. Um, always nice to see Warren Buffett, seen at the quotes on the bottom there, has been a large advocate of share buybacks over the years, and his investment company, Berkshire Hathaway, owns around $176 billion worth of Apple stock. Um, just out of interest, uh, a bit more on buybacks, a common criticism of these buybacks is that they may come at the expense of the future organic growth of these companies, but in this case, because of Apple's ability to reduce such huge amounts of cash, they are still able to spend over uh, $25 billion a year on research and development. And since the start of the buyback program, they've been able to grow revenues in excess of 10% per year. Um, so they are still able to invest back in the business, grow that top line, and then still return large amount of cash to shareholders. Um, just lastly, on top of this, Large investments into a company's future growth is always risky. Uh, around 75% of mergers and acquisitions fail, and 50% of large internal capital expenditure programs fail to achieve their, their cost of capital. So in contrast, buybacks is a simple form of capital allocation, yet are, are probably the most successful in generating a return on investors' capital at, at exceptionally low risk. So this is just quite an interesting chart that shows the forecast one-year total yield of the companies we invest in, with this being split, obviously, between buybacks and dividends. While we are indifferent between these two types of yields, dividends, the more traditional form, still makes up the majority of this yield. But this is largely just a, a function of the investment opportunities out there. However, buybacks does still make up a very large part of the yield, especially for the, the technology companies such as um, uh, Alphabet uh, and Apple, where you can see that orange block representing the buyback yield, making up a, a large part of their, their total yield. Um, just as a, as a general rule, to warrant initial investment into the portfolio, company must be trading, companies must be trading on a total yield in excess of 3%. Um, as you can imagine, uh, prices fluctuate as prices fluctuate, those yields fluctuate as, as well and may fall below that threshold. Uh, as you can see, there has been the case with Microsoft this year with the share price. And, and this is just due to the share price 
being up over 55 percent. However, um, when this is this is the case, we will continue to hold these companies uh, as long as the upside is still there, as they could very well go on to increase their capital return programs. And we want to avoid a situation where we are just continuously cutting our winners. Uh, overall, the AMC has a very elevated average yield of around 5.2% and a weighted average yield of 7.4%. So given the nature of this product, we place a very large emphasis on the quality of the fundamentals of the companies that we invest in. And I think this, this reflects here in the AMC's equity holdings having far better fundamentals versus the S&P 500. That first line there, total yield, of course, that's, that's to be expected given the yielding strategy. But our, our focus on defensiveness and quality is also reflected by the AMC's holdings having lower indebtedness, shown by a, a lower net debt EBITDA ratio versus the index and then far superior profitability when looking at the profit margins, with the S&P having a profit margin of 10% and our AMC having a weighted profit margin of 25%. Um, then very importantly, on return on equity, over the longer term, it is very hard for a stock to earn a return in excess of the return that the underlying business earns. Uh, so, for example, if a, a business earns a 6% return on capital over 40 years and you hold it for that 40 years, you're not going to get much more of a return than 6% per year, even if you originally buy it at, at a huge discount. So it is very positive to see here just how strong our return on equity is for these companies. Equity obviously makes, a, a very, makes up a very large part of these companies' capital base. And as we've seen, they also are, are less indebted. Um, and this return on equity and capital will ultimately drive share price return in, in the longer run. Um, lastly, despite these stronger fundamentals, AMC002 is also trading at a discount on a forward PE basis versus this index. Um, this is not our primary valuation metric. We do have, as Charlie mentioned earlier, our own proprietary valuation system. But it is nice to see that the AMC also gets a tick here based on a more traditional metric. Okay, so just to, to conclude, uh, through RAND investments, this AMC002 allows access to the world's best blue chip companies. These are long established global multinational companies, the likes of which, um, if I'm honest, are, are limited within the local investment universe. It is important to note that despite being a, a RAND product, the underlying assets are offshore assets. And as we've seen, they're predominantly listed in US dollars. Um, what this means is that if the RAND is weak, it will both bolster performance and, and obviously vice versa. Um, you'll see on the, the charts on the left there that we do like to compare the AMC's performance to local investment options as this AMC is listed on the JSC and hence is a direct alternative to such options. Um, as, I, as I said earlier, the AMC launched in the back end of December last year and versus the JSC performance has been strong. Uh, looking at the year to date return up to the end of the last full month, October, you can see that the AMC returned 15% versus the JSC all share total return having a negative return of 1%. Just to surmise, we do believe we have a unique product here both as an offshore standpoint and in the local landscape in particular. As we have seen, employing a high yielding strategy has historically outperformed the wider market. And on top of the yield components, our focus on, on selecting uh, global, global companies with strong cash generation and defensive characteristics, such as your strong balance sheets and competitive uh, positioning. Uh, what does this mean? This should allow these companies to endure through the various business cycles uh, and economic conditions. And this defensiveness alongside the sector and, and geographical diversification I spoke to earlier should help mitigate against major drawdowns of the AMC. Um, however, it's always important to note that there will be uh, added elements of volatility due to those currency moves. But again, this is a hard currency product which you can access through local RANDs. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'll just jump in there just to conclude and round things up. 
Um, Simon, you've, you've showcased AMCs for, for some time on just one lap, um, and we are we believe in the product. Um, hence we, you know, hence our second um, uh, the launch um, of our second AMC 007. Um, the name is quite catchy, especially for it what for what we're aiming to do uh, in that product. However, um, they it's very much aligned with what we are trying to do here at High Street, which is to um, to be specialists in the offshore and rand hedge market. So these are ideal um, instruments uh, which investors from uh, be it uh, moderate risk investors to the more aggressive uh, invest, uh, investor who's able to endure some levels of volatility, they are able to get access to a um, an offshore investment with their RANDs. And uh, they can, it's as easy as buying a share on the local exchange. Um, if someone wants to say trade it, there are those out there who, who want to buy those so high, it's very difficult to, to pick those levels, but some investors do like that. Um, that flexibility to be able to switch between the investments. And there, there are no minimums or let's say very low minimums with uh, each uh, unit costing approximately 1,000 Rand. Um, and excitedly, um, AMCs are now available on online platforms as well. Um, Easy Equities, for example, um, they have brought, recently launched AMCs and we are in discussions to potentially get them on that platform as well. Um, so yeah, we can hand over to you, uh, Simon, and if you've got any questions, we'll yeah, be happy to assist. Thanks, James. That was great. A couple of questions coming through. Clive is asking, Clive, you're asking compulsory, compulsory trading fees for AMCs similar to ETFs or shares? Yeah, a JC product. So you pay your brokerage, you pay your, your uh, taxes, uh, uh, IPLs, and all of those type of things, investor protection levy. Uh, it's, otherwise, it is pretty much trading on on the jc and that's the beauty of them and i think you guys uh, will agree is that it, it it's nice and easy i don't need to go to a list platform or something i've got my jc account i can get nice and simple uh, uh, access into them anonymous is asking about your 007 one and asking the upward momentum is there a risk of the upward momentum fizzling out as tech has had a good uh, run in the last 2 years I would add a one to that and say tech has probably had a good run in the last uh, 12 years. I suppose there's always a risk of it fizzling out, but I suppose ultimately, uh, I mean, tech is always going to be popular and it might just be uh, different names that are, are, are perhaps the leaders, a different Magnificent Seven perhaps. Yeah, I had to throw something, you, you answered it as, as well as I could. I was going to say, uh, absolutely, definitely in the last 10 years, tech has been the, the standout performer. And while there is a risk uh, naturally of some mean reversion happening, um, particularly with the wider S&P actually being down for the year, uh, of course, uh, tech could have a bit of a pause as the rest catches up. Um, but the reality is they've outperformed because of their superior fundamental metrics. I mean, these are companies that have such enormous competitive advantages while employing economies of scale that they can grow the top line uh, at a great, um, great amount while generating an enormous amount of Free cash flow because yeah. their operating uh, expenses don't grow at the same at the same rates as their revenue. So I think that sort of that move and lever towards profitability while maintaining growth uh, is a great reason. We saw in the, the earlier uh, chart about how earnings per share growth ultimately drives share price performance. And I think as long as these companies can continue to grow the bottom line at the rate they have been doing, uh, they will continue to provide uh, share price appreciation. Uh, Innocence asking, uh, you said easy equities. He said, please confirm you're working to get the products on easy equities. That was what I heard. So you are in talks and hopefully they will be available there sooner rather than later. Yes. So we currently have our local balance rig 28 fund on the platform and we are in discussions with the team to get the AMCs loaded. While nothing can be guaranteed, um, uh, discussions are very positive and we expect to, to have some results in, I'll say, the coming weeks. Yeah, I, from my experience, Easy Equities has been loading some AMCs, and that comes to the next question, um, which is around market makers. Much like we see in, uh, for example, the the the, the ETF space, uh, there is a market maker for these products, and that is, in in, in your particular case, uh, Standard Bank. Yeah, very much so, and I think that's an important consideration. 
uh, Standard Bank will make a market available um, on, on the book, um, and that's a spread of 0.5% either side of the NAV. Um, most uh, AMCs that we're aware of, the spread is 1%, so we've tried mm -hmm. to narrow that spread. However, if you contact the market maker directly, then you can trade at NAV and you remove that 0.5% spread. So we encourage all of, all, all of our investors to get in touch with Standard Bank Direct. Yeah, and folks are saying, how do you do that? Just head to the AMC 002 or 007. Uh, you'll find some sense announcements there and you'll find market maker contact details. Question around dividends. Uh, the, double is, the 002 does not pay out uh, dividends. They are reinvested. I take your point on that. The 007, is that also reinvesting? Yeah, absolutely. Any, any, invest, uh, any dividends that are paid uh, will be reinvested. It's not typically, typically the companies invested aren't the biggest dividend payers. There are some, uh, but all dividends are invested. Question coming through around offshore allowance. Now, uh, I'm not quite sure this came on to, from Twitter. Uh, if I don't get the question quite right, we ask it. My understanding here, guys, is that this is a, 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 a locally listed, the money's offshore, but this is not part of my offshore allowance. And when I exit, I exit in ZAR. So there's no impact on my 1 million discretionary and 10 million available every year. 100%. Uh, you'll be using the offshore capacity of Standard Bank, the issuer, um, and therefore it has no effect on your allowance. Cool. Folks, I'm not seeing uh, a question coming through. Will the recording be available? Yep, uh, we have recorded. It will be up. Uh, let me say later this afternoon, I've got some uh, interviews to record in the bit, but it'll certainly be up later this afternoon uh, on the justonelap.com website. And uh, Zoom will send links through to that tomorrow, but you can just go to Just One Lap. The video will be available there. Uh, no more questions coming. Nope, we're good with the questions. Gents, really appreciate it. I like the funds. I like the, the philosophy. I like the the, the, the difference it, it, it's not just another you know sort of fun coming along and and, and you know saying we're going to buy the best stocks i like the themes that are running through really appreciate the time today thank you so much thanks so much ladies and gents appreciate your time today uh there were other things vying for your time cricket probably wasn't one of them the bad news is it has stopped raining so the cricket has resumed uh but anyway everyone have a great day further as always look after yourself if you can look after somebody else as well cheers all Good time.